Hey everybody, this video is a really quick uh, rapid review kind of video on the germ layer derivatives. This is the first time that I'm attempting to teach embryology. Embryology is just a really tough and challenging topic because of how much minutia you have to memorize. But I think that I have something really useful for you if you struggle to learn the derivatives of the ectoderm, the mesoderm, and the endoderm. So the germ layer derivatives, pretty much, as I just said, get divided up into the ectoderm, the mesoderm, and the endoderm. And then the ectoderm further is divided up into the surface ectoderm, the neural tube, and the neural crest. So each of these things, right, like the surface ectoderm, the neural tube, the neural crest, the mesoderm, and the endoderm, they all have derivatives that come from them. So they give rise to different things that end up in the human body. So on tests, on USMLE, on COMLEX, it's really important to know what comes from which of these five or six, if you will, pieces, because you'll have to know that to answer questions. So what we need to do is go through these one at a time and show what different organs and structures, et cetera, come from each of these different things. So obviously, before we get started, if anything comes from the surface ectoderm, the neural tube, or the neural crest, you should know that specifically, but obviously that is to say also that it is derived from the ectoderm. So let's start with the surface ectoderm, the neural tube, and the neural crest, because since there's three different types of ectoderm derivatives, which each have their own derivatives, obviously the hardest one to memorize is the ectoderm. The mesoderm and the endoderm, as you'll see at the end of this video, are actually pretty easy. So we're gonna do the hard stuff first. Let's start with the surface ectoderm. So the way that I'm gonna do this for the surface ectoderm, the neural tube, and the neural crest is that the mnemonic for each of these is gonna be a simple sentence that has to do with the word that we're trying to learn. So in this case, we're talking about the surface ectoderm and the word that you're gonna focus on is the surface. So the mnemonic here is that you clean the surface with soap. And clean, C-L-E-A-N, and SOAP, S-O-A-P, are going to be our mnemonics for remembering what comes from the surface ectoderm. And the way that you'll remember this is because it has surface in the name, and you clean the surface with soap. So C-L-E-A-N in clean tells us that the anal canal, uh, specifically below the pectinate line, comes from the surface ectoderm. The lens comes from the surface ectoderm. The epidermis comes from the surface ectoderm. The adenohypophysis comes from the surface ectoderm, and the nipple, which is to say mammary gland, comes from the surface ectoderm. So those are C-L-E-A-N, because you clean the surface with soap. And now soap, S-O-A-P, tells us that the sweat gland, olfactory epithelium, auditory organs, and parotid glands all also come from the surface ectoderm. So if you're sitting there and you're taking your test and you're, you get a question about this, the way that you should approach it is saying, okay, well, you clean the surface with soap. So the clean and soap mnemonic, C-L-E-A-N-S-O-A-P, has to do with surface ectoderm, which comes from the ectoderm germ layer. So that's how you're going to know this. So I'm going to shrink the text here just to fit it all on the screen. Go back to the previous part of this video if you want to review it. But that's the derivative of the surface ectoderm. Remember that you clean the surface with soap. Now we're going to do the neural tube. So just like in the first one, we focused on the word surface. For neural tube, you're going to focus on the word tube. And for some reason, I always think of a tube of neosporin, which is an antibacterial ointment. And we're going to change the spelling a little bit. So instead of neosporin, it's going to be neosporin. And those letters, N-E-A-S-P-O-R-E-N, are going to tell us what comes from the neural tube. So neural tube astrocytes, spinal cord, pineal gland, oligodendrocytes, retina, ependymal cells, and neurohypophysis. Neosporin all come from the neural tube, and the way that you remember that is a tube of neosporin ointment. So pretty easy, right? Obviously, there's a lot of memorization involved here in understanding what you know, what parts go with each of these letters, but this is simplifying it beyond anything I've seen in first aid or in question banks. There's really no good mnemonic for this, so hopefully this is something. So I'm gonna shrink the text here so we can fit it all on the screen, and let's wrap up the ectoderm by talking about what comes from the neural crest. So for this one, focus on the word crest, which makes me think of crest toothpaste. And when I was making this mnemonic, I was like, what could I really do with crest 
toothpaste. Well, anytime you go to a motel, they put those little free miniature toothpastes in the bathroom. So I think about that um, motels get spammed with Crest toothpaste, which is to say that they put those little toothpastes everywhere. They're spamming their motel with Crest toothpaste. And the reason that I choose this mnemonic is because spams and motel, S-P-A-M-S, M-O-T-E-L, are the letters that tell us what comes from the neural crest. So S-P-A-M-S for Schwann cells, peripheral nervous system, adrenal medulla, myenteric, a.k.a. Auerbach plexus, and spiral membrane, and then motel, M-O-T-E-L for melanocytes, odontoblasts, thyroid C cells, which means parafollicular cells, endocardial cushion, and laryngeal cartilage. Now, I know that this one's pretty you know, annoying to have to memorize this many letters and what those letters stand for. But if you look in first aid, I don't remember what their mnemonic is, but I, I remember that at the time I was studying, I really didn't think it was good. It had absolutely nothing to do with the neural crest. It was just a random assortment of letters. So the reason I'm saying that is if you're annoyed by having to memorize what these letters stand for, it could be way worse, right? If you didn't have these mnemonics and you were just using whatever first aid gave you, it's it's like, in my opinion, it's pretty crappy, right? It's just a random assortment of letters having nothing to do with neural crest. So even if you manage to memorize their mnemonic, you would have no idea that it tells you what comes from the neural crest because the mnemonic itself doesn't cue you into that. So that's why I chose that you spam the, the you know, spams motel with crest toothpaste crest should remind you of the neural crest. So that's everything for the three divisions of the ectoderm. So obviously all of that stuff that you see all comes from the ectoderm, but it's really important to know which one is surface ectoderm, which one's neural tube, and which one's neural crest. Now, like very, very briefly, for mesoderm and endoderm, you shouldn't memorize individual structures. You should just have a general rule of thumb. And the rule of thumb is that anything that's musculoskeletal is going to be in the mesoderm. M meso, you know, kind of means middle. So if you think about your body, you've got the external like skin and all this other stuff that comes from the ectoderm. Then you've got the mesoderm or the middle, which is like your musculoskeletal stuff. So the muscles, the bones, etc. that's all in the middle of your body. It's between the skin or the outermost layer and the internal most layer, which is your organs. And the organs are going to be in the endoderm. Endo means inside. So endoderm is going to be your GI organs and viscera. Mesoderm is going to be your musculoskeletal structures. The reason that I think you should just memorize that and nothing else is because chances are if you're getting a question on test day about some type of germ layer derivative, they're going to go into the ectoderm category because it's so specific, like which subtype of ectoderm it's coming from. I really doubt they would give you a mesoderm or endoderm. Of course it could happen, but more than likely it would be on the ectoderm. So save yourself the brain space and just memorize the musculoskeletal structures in the mesoderm and the GI organs and viscera in the endoderm. The last thing that we need to talk about today is what happens if you have an abnormality in the derivative or the formulation of the mesoderm. So the mesoderm again means middle. And when I think about that, I think about the TV show Malcolm in the Middle. The word middle should cue you into this TV show. And using that association, the mnemonic here is a clear TV that's playing Malcolm in the Middle or a clear TV with Malcolm in the Middle. So just imagine this on the TV. And the mnemonic is going to tell you that we're going to use clear and TV. So C-L-E-A-R and T-V. These are the problems that you could expect to have if the formation of the mesoderm is not done correctly. So C-L-E-A-R for cardiac, limb, esophageal, anal, and renal abnormalities. T for tracheal abnormalities and V for vertebral abnormalities. So if the mesoderm does not form properly, clear TV are the abnormalities you'll expect to see. The way that you'll remember this is that you have a clear TV with Malcolm in the middle. The reason that that's our mnemonic is because middle reminds us of mesoderm and mesoderm abnormalities are clear TV, cardiac, limb, esophageal, anal, renal, tracheal, and vertebral. So this is sort of the summary slide right here. The high yield takeaway, again, is to know the derivatives that you see on this slide, especially those within the ectoderm, and then just know what happens if the mesoderm does not form appropriately. But that's it. That's your germ layer derivatives.